All right, back to the job of building and how XP can help you do it better. Here are a couple of last practices, the 10 minute build and continuous integration. Continuous integration refers to this idea that developers will check out versions of the code, make their changes, add stuff, do whatever they're gonna, they're, they're working on at the moment, and then those things will all have to be merged back together and built and it'll all have to work again. And the fact that you should do this continuously a lot because if you have a lot of unmerged code, you may find days later that there's conflicts, these things don't make sense together, and you're gonna have generated a lot of waste and need for rework. So if you do this very constantly, then one, developers don't have to worry as much that, gee, this might make a, a problem with somebody else's code. They'll just, boom, integrate it together, see, and if it does, they fix it. And, and two, you just, those problems won't um, accrue as much size if you're doing this a lot, is, is what XP would say about this. And you've heard Spotify talk about how everything's in automation so that they can do this. They, the continuous integration will generally run a set of batch processes that take the code, build it into whatever form it needs to be in to be kind of working software, and then run a bunch of tests against it, unit tests as well as functional tests. Let's talk about that for a minute. A unit test we talked about, this is a, a kind of lower level where we're testing individual pieces of code. And then up above that, we have this idea of functional tests. And these test the system as a whole after you put all the code together. And typically a build process will run this all and build the software, run all the unit tests. And then once the software is put together, it'll run these functional tests. And Automating that means that you can do it a lot and find the problems quickly and, and fix them. So the idea of the 10 minute build, which is kind of a corollary to this, is that you should put things together so it can run in 10 minutes and because that facilitates you being able to do it a lot and not having it take too long. Um, so this is something that you will, I think, consistently hear um, from high functioning agile teams is that all the kind of testing and build that's all automated, even sometimes putting up test environments and related things like that. We'll talk about that more in course four, that they've invested in automation. So if there's a tedious task that a developer or tester is obliged to do, they look to automate that early and then accrue that investment, add to it over time so that they are able to integrate a lot, test a lot and see how things are working before. Um, whereas the, the sort of counter example or counter case there is that it's really hard to get everything put together and working. Releases are infrequent and kind of a big mess and generate a lot of overhead. And that, that's a case where XP would say, focus on automation, invest in this, and your practice of Agile will become healthier. So we've talked about the job of building. And even if you're not a software developer, or even if that's not your job now in your team, I hope you've learned enough to make room for these practices and introduce them to your team so that they can decide if and, and which of those they want to apply in what way and that you can help them integrate that into your overall practice of Agile in a way that helps the team improve and become more productive.